Good morning. This is our last week in class. We're going to be going over personality and emotions. Everybody say, good morning. Good morning. This is 2020, November, what? 8th, huh? 16. Wow. Wow. Next time we see each other, maybe 2021, maybe 2025. Who knows? 2030, right? Okay. Well, I'd like to wish you the best for your future. The most important, don't forget about me. Don't look at me, say, what? Unless I get so old, you cannot recognize me. But maybe you get too, too big, I cannot recognize you, right? But remind me. Okay, so uh, we talk about people use different way to describe personality, right? And then, you know, Freud say, Freud say, we have a, how many part of ourselves? How many part of ourselves Freud say? What Freud say about human being? How many part we have? Three. Who bring you here? Which part of you bring you here? Your in, when you hear that your in must be very good. Yeah. Your ego. Your in won't stay home. Your in won't stay home. Your super ego say, go to class. And your ego say, huh, let me think about, okay, let me go. This is the last time of the class. I better go to see Dr. Lo. Right? And that's your ego, right? And then we, then we talk about uh, Ka Yong, right? He say, we not only have an individual unconscious, we also have group, group, what? Collective unconscious. So last Friday, actually is what? 13th Friday. So then when I realized 13th Friday, even that's my, my, not my original, that's it should supposed to be your collective unconscious, not mine, right? But I've been here so long, I suddenly realized it's 13th Friday, I start to do like this. Hopefully nothing bad is going to happen, right? Okay, and then we pass, right? And then uh, the object relations school say, actually it's very important for the first two years of life to have a good relationship with who? Your mother. He, she, she said we always try to balance between dependence and independence. If you have a very good relationship with your mother, actually they help you. Because no matter where you are, if you have a good relationship with your mother, you don't feel alone, okay? And then we talk about modern psychology. We actually use psychological testing to measure your personality, right? And then we, they come out like five, big five. So during the winter break, if you have nothing to do, go to Google. Big five, personality, personality. Or if you want to play with your friend, ask them to take tests and then they can come out what kind of personality they are or you are, okay? And then we talk about, you know, actually, our personality actually also influenced by two parts. One is what? Genetic. And one is what? Environment. And that environment can be what? Can be parents can be peers, but then we saw actually peers influence more than parents, right? Okay, and the last one actually, they have another school, the way they talk about personality, they based on humanist, humanist, okay? They, they believe actually we, sh we should think about human as a whole, so their per perspective different from psychoanalysis, okay? And they actually believe we have potential to grow, okay? We have potential to achieve, okay? And I think as I did, they have three people, and I believe in your PPT, you, should, you may already have them, okay? First one is Maslow. 
Okay, Marshall actually, I like his theory because he talk about this. Let me jump. Let, let me jump here. I like this. I like this uh, <clears throat> Maslow model. Okay, he say we all have a five needs. Okay, the first need is actually we can call surviving physical needs. Okay, so think about our every day our life. Okay, when you wake up. What do you want to do? Usually you are so hungry, then so you want to make sure you got something for fulfill your physical needs, right? Or when you move to the college, first thing you want to make sure you have a place to stay, right? So physical needs actually is very important foundation, right? And then once people fulfill these needs, the second level they start to say, is this safe? Am I safe? You are try to find security needs to fulfill. Okay, so for example, right now during this pandemic, while we wear mask, we try to be safe. Right? Physically we are okay. We all have something to put on, keep warm, but we want to keep safe. Right? We want to stay safe, right? Then, if we can be safe, then we want to make sure we have a place to belong, right? So when you move to college, you find a dome, and then you know the environment is safe. Then now we say, where's the friend? Where's people? Then, oh, that's a party. Oh, that's an organization. I want to join. Or right now, when we wear masks, they ask you to stay home. But you still like go to Google and you go to Zoom. You you want to fulfill you you want to feel belonging. It's so hard to not belong to anybody, right? So belonging is important, right? So once you feel belonging, now you start to see how about me? Anybody know me, right? So when you in college, you got a friend, but you start to see can they hear my voice? Do they know who am I? Right? Do is teacher know what my opinion? I'm not just want to belong to this class. I also want to shine this class. You want to feel self-esteem. And then if you can fulfill all these needs, the last one you want to get is what? Self-actualization. Right? That means I have a dream. I want to fulfill that dream. I want to fulfill that dream, okay? And actually, this hierarchy can be continued. For example, when you get to like right now, we all we are pretty good, right? We know we are we meeting in this room. We know this room is safe, and we know each other. And then I know you, you know me, and you feel very good. Now, when you go to next class, when next semester started, you need to start from the bottom. Right? And Maslow said that's what shape our personality. Okay? And sometimes people, their personality, or maybe the environment, keep them in the bottom. But some people is more because they feel they fulfill their needs, so they feel more comfortable to climb up, to climb up, to climb up, to climb up. Okay, where are you now? Right now. Is anybody you are here? You still try to survive. Okay? Anybody you are here? Anybody you already here? Or you are here? Or you are here? Anybody you are here right now? Raise your hand. You are pursuing your dream. You are feel like your dream. It's it's almost true. Right? And then at the end of the semester you got your report card and they said, wow, all my hard working is paid off. Okay, so I think that's what Maslow said. And I, I think it makes sense, right? That makes sense, that the hierarchy need. So in your in your quiz, I believe I asked you which level is who what. Okay, and Maslow is very famous, so you better remember him. Okay. The next person is Carl Rogers. Okay. You know Carl Rogers used to teach in Hood, you know, Ohio State University. 
His first career, his first teaching position is in Ohio State University, okay? He stayed there for four years, and then he moved to Chicago, and then he moved to Wisconsin, and then he moved to California. And it's very interesting, he moved to uh, Ohio in 1939, 1939. And then one of my students actually told me he, she found a, uh, Rogers' address in that time. So Edgar in Columbus. I, I, I forget to put the picture. I, I, I went to his house. Of course, he, he already no longer there. He already passed away. But then he's the first owner for the house. Okay. But anyway, when he in Ohio State, he's very lonely. Why? Even they, they want him so badly, they hire him from have him move from New York to Ohio. But because he's the first person, emphasize if you want to help in people, you have to help in people unconditionally and then no, no direction. Okay? Because during that time, all the psychology department, you know, they are teaching Freud. Okay? Remember Freud talk about unconscious, right? Talk about dream, right? And then he believed, you know, if you want to help in people, only thing you need to do is what? This. What's this? Listen. He said everybody have the answer in their life. As long as you listen, people will be able to find out their own answer. Okay? So actually that's his and so that's why he believed human beings, just like Maslow said, have that potential to grow. They already have potential to grow. They already know the answer. They just struggle to come out the answer. But if you can give them unconditional, not conditional possibility, then they are able to find the answer. Okay, what's different between conditioned and unconditioned? What's different? Yes? Yes, yes. So at the end of semester, when you got a report card, your parents, if they are additional Padre God people, they, they, should, they should be love you regardless what grade you get. Okay, if the conditional Padre God doesn't mean, I only love you if you bring all the eight bags home. Okay, and which one's more healthy? This one. Right, and the reason he believed this one, just like Maslow said, because he believed everybody had potential to grow. And the the reason he got this idea because actually his family is a, from the farm, okay, and so his father actually have him and other brothers in charge of their farm. So he he observed the the nature. He found the potato in his basement. Even it's so dark, but they have a little bit small window. Just because the small window with the sunshine, even the small, the potato can start to sprout and grow. He said, oh my God, that's human being. You know, so that's why for each of you, actually, I have a high expectation. No matter what grade you get from me, I believe you all going to grow, okay? And that's also you have to trust yourself, okay? Sometimes you may not learn well for some subject in certain time. It's not mean you are going to be forever like this, okay? So that's muscle, okay? Now, Rodeman. Rodeman actually is from Ohio. Rodeman was born on uh, April 20, 1909, in Ada, Ohio. And then you, from here you can see, uh, he went to uh, Michigan State University uh, to pursue an English major, but then later uh, he was uh, expelled, you know, due to a student magazine he co-published, which talked critically about the state legislatures. Then after that, he uh, attended uh, Abilene College 
where he got a bachelor degree in English. And he also uh, obtained a minor in Greek literature and history. And very interesting is after he graduated in 1930, he taught English in Greece for three years. And also he met a famous psych psychologist, you know, Ever Eller. And Ever Eller is uh, also uh, very important in psycho uh, analysis group. Even in this class, we didn't have a chance to talk about him, but he's uh he also worked with Freud for many, many years. Okay, and then uh, in 1942, uh, Roller May was diagnosed with uh, tuberculosis uh, disease, and then which motivated him to attend Columbia University uh, in psychology program, and he got his PhD in clinical psychology by 1949 and because his life experience he experienced a lot of an anxiety problem so actually his uh, famous theory and idea is talk about uh, the meaning of anxiety so if we come back to the uh, this slide we can see um, you know he start with a humanistic the belief in free will so he believed even you you are suffering, you still can uh find the meaning uh to enjoy your life. Okay. So in emphasize even loneliness, anxiety, and alienation, it's all uh important for your life. Okay. And so he 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 can be uh we can call his theory is part of existentialism okay they emphasize you know the people even have a challenge and dilemmas but then you have to find the meaning to aware it's important for the existence okay so so that's why he's part of existentialism uh, theory okay and then um the next one we are talking about uh one theory called life narrative, okay? Life narrative is believe the story that each of us develop over time. Actually, they can explain ourselves and make meaning of everything that has happened to us. So actually, I have a student. Uh, she is the non-traditional non student. And then uh, her son was passed away um, at age 20. So she is very sad. And when I uh, interview her, uh, I asked her, you know, if you knowing you can only have him for 20 years, are you still want him? Anyway. So she said, I said, if you have a, if you can restart your life and then you know this son only come to your life for 20 years, st st do you still want him to come? Okay. And then after those life story, she said, yes. Okay. But without this storytelling, she will say no, right? Why I need a son only for 20 years, right? And that's kind of life narrative. That makes sense, right? So when you start now, when people tell you the story, if you find their story so negative, don't say, you are too negative. Start to ask them the positive point so they can start to turn, okay? Okay, and then, okay, I think that's, that's good for now, okay? So I'm going to go to emotion. That sounds good? So that is a
Say brain and then yeah, brain for sure. And then the brain, so you say a um, um, mm -hmm. Yeah, that's brain, right? And then what? Heart. Your heart. So when we say heart is more like what? Your thinking, right? Your thinking, right? So two. And then what what else? Also your culture your culture okay so actually yeah in this chapter we will talk about we all have emotion but that emotion how do you how do you interpret the event will influence your emotion and then also your brain if your brain got damaged they may not able to experience emotion okay so now let's look at okay we all have emotion and how do people know are you happy or not how do people know how do people know facial your facial expression and so facial expression will be nonverbal, right so when people look at your face they say oh my gosh he is he is not happy right or mm, what's going on he looks so happy right and also you tell people you tell people right you verbally you say yeah yeah right you verbally verbally say that or non-verbally or facial right okay so let's look at our face okay we all have this face universally you don't need to teach you know what that looks like okay and actually this is what what's this surprise, surprise. what's this disgust, huh? disgust. disgust. <laughs> right how about this yeah. say how about this angry, angry. how about this scared. scared how about this happy, happy. what's this Jealous. <laughs> <laughs> So actually, even up there, did you re realize when you are in America, even some people may not understand you, but they still can communicate with you. Yeah. Right? Right? So you just smile and people will say hi, right? And so that, that, that facial is our first window for our emotion, right? So yeah, so that's here, right? So this one, actually, we call it a primary emotion that one is universal that one is everybody the same right and then from very young age people's kids start to able to express of course some will come a little bit later like little baby may not know how to show surprise face they don't like they don't really know maybe everything for them is surprise but they just don't say the surprise right okay now let's look at our face do you know it's very important do you know it's very important for your facial expression? Why is it important? Facial is for you to communicate with others and same time for you to com communicate with your brain. Okay, they have one word called facial feedback. Facial feedback. That's mean that's not mean you give me the feedback. That means you give your brain the feedback. Okay, so when you smile, our muscle is going up. And it will send a message to your brain. And your brain say, hey, I'm happy. Okay, and then when your brain know you are happy, they start to release the happiness hormones. And then all your energy going up. Okay, but if you put your muscle down 
show depressed, show anger, and the message get to your brain. And your brain starts to say, oh my gosh, you are hopeless, right? You are angry. And you'll find your own message, your, 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 your energy going down. Okay, so it's even okay to fake smiling, pretending. Even you pretending, you can fool your brain. So if you have a very difficult moment, difficult time, and you don't know, don't know what to do, maybe you should smile rather than get upset face. Show smile, and then gradually you'll find that your energy come back because your brain got a message. It looks like you are happy. That's why when we take picture, we always say what? What do you always say? When you take picture, when people take picture, what do you say? Cheese. Because the word cheese put your muscle up. Put your muscle up. Right? And so they call facial feedback. They call facial feedback. That is a signal not only to other people and also to yourself. Okay? I think we will come back this one in other slide. Okay, so that is face face. Okay, so you know face smiling tells us that we are happy and then you know if, if you are if you are angry. Not only so sometimes you don't need to care about other people. Your body is the first one to get the message. Your body is the first one to get message. Your brain is the first one to get message. Okay? So try to do the thing for yourself. Okay? You say, I want to smile because I want to cheer myself up. Okay? Please keep smiling for these couple weeks. Okay? Don't smile because holiday is coming. You have to smile regardless. Okay, you need to smile regardless. Okay, so now, okay, we, they already talk about face, face, face. Okay, so when we say physical, not only face, also our brain, right? And then actually, uh, Tara just tell us, right? The one we we put that a metal is the major one. Okay, what's that? What's the matter? Okay, here. Remember, we talk about this one when we talk about memory, right? This one keep the emotional memory, okay? And also, this one responsible for assessing threat. So if something comes in, something scary things comes in, your amygdala start to say, ooh ooh, ooh ooh, the alarm start to ring, okay? However, this is not the only place in charge emotion. You also have a, you see, cerebral cortex and then prefrontal cortex. Actually, we are going to talk about in next slide. Okay, here say cerebral cortex is here, can override the amygdala's initial appraisal. Okay, so this one get the initial appraisal say, uh oh, it's threatened. Uh oh, it's, it should be the good news or bad news. But then your cerebral cortex have a little need to be do more. Okay? Now, remember this one in charge of what? A long term memory? Right? Remember we have this long term memory and then hippocampus long term memory? Right? Both of them. Right? Okay, now, look at this. Our prefrontal cortex, prefrontal cortex, also in charge emotion to tell you left or right. Okay, what does that mean? So look at here. Your left side of prefrontal cortex in charge of what? Involve a motivation to approach others. Okay, so the approach including both can be very exciting or very angry. That's approach, okay? But your right side is what? We strong, we strong. Okay, now the problem is if you got damage, 
if you got damage for this LPC, then you have a no ability to be approached. So you lose the ability to able to join. Okay? Okay? And then how about the right side? Right side is involved withdraw or scan, right? So when you need a withdraw, when you need a scan, if something scary comes in, if tornado warning is supposed to be high, right? But if you have damage of this area, they have, a, they have no way to know that's called scary. They become a mania. Overjoy. So they just keep joining. They don't they know nothing. Okay. So either or is not good. That's why we need to have all this good brain keep us balanced. Okay. So LPC in charge what? In charge what? LPC is what? Approach. Okay? And then right PC in charge what? Withdraw. Okay, and then reverse that if you are damaged, then you are not able to be approached. You're not able to be happy. Okay, and then if you are damaged of a right PC, then you don't know what's called hiding, scared. They have no idea. Okay, so sometimes people find, you know, if they are damaged to their brain, their personality can be totally changed. That's because that's the reason. Okay? Okay? Now, and they find actually, even for animal, when okay, they study, if they are, you know, copy people's behavior, actually their brain release different kind of hormones there. Okay, now, okay, not only your brain, also your hormones, your hormones, right? Remember we said, you get a message and release hormone, right? And then, you know, if they are increased, every now every, then they will make you what? Alert, arousal. Okay, so that is very important. That, that's why when people, what? They are encounter some very huge threat and they can run very fast, right? They can run very fast, right? Or they can fight him back with the energy they never know they have. And that's because of the, the, the hormone they release. Okay? So this is about physically. Okay? And then all here. Okay, another thing. Okay, so now let's just talk about, you know, remember we talk about the, the memory and we talk about use eyewitness, that can be a trouble. And this is another thing, photograph machine. Because we want to use that to detect criminal, right? We say when they are, if you're guilty, then maybe you can detect. Unfortunately, here say very low reliability and validity. Because people somewhere, somehow they can manipulate. Or maybe they already have them brain damage. They don't even know what to be scared. So you want to detect their guilty feeling. You don't find any. Right? So that is something keep you in mind. So in the future, you guys have to create something even more, more fancier or more detailed, more accurate way to do something. You learn it's not easy, you know that? <laughs> this generation, they create iPhone, smartphone, then what do you do for next year, next generation? That's your job. That's your job. At least we, we want to just die Amish. We don't, they don't want to change it forever. If we want to keep changing, right? Okay, okay, so now, second thing. Okay, so the first one we say our emotion charged by physical, right? By face, by brain, by hormone, right? The second factor affect our emotion is your thinking. You're thinking, okay? So your thinking influences your, you know, your perception, attribution, and goal. Okay, so let's look at it. Two-factor theory. What's 
two-factor theorem, okay? Remember the bread? Remember the hormones? So actually, when something happened, we cannot, we don't need to work, try anything. Our body will respond right away. Our body will respond right away, right? And that's called physiological arousal. Physiological arousal. For example, when you, when you walk through the uh, sky bridge between mountains, and that can be very scary, right? You don't know that's scary, but your body start to, you start to have, a, you know, hormones there, uh, uh, your breathing get too faster, right? That's physical arousal. But some people interpreting that as anxiety. Some people interpreting that as exciting. Right? Actually, that's your cognitive interpretation. And then they'll decide your emotional experience. Okay, we have a, we may have a similar physical arousal, but then people interpret it differently. Okay, now thank you for pandemic. You don't need to come here for final exam. Just picture yourself if you walk in as a for final exam. Okay, then because you walk your dog is a little bit far away, and then you don't have time, you don't have a transportation, you, don't, you have to walk here. And then you wake up and almost two days, so you walk so fast, fast, so fast. And so when you walk in the classroom, <laughs> like this. And you may tell yourself, oh my gosh, I'm so nervous. <clears throat> because exactly. And that nervous is come from actually your thinking. Your body is so arousal just because you walk. Okay, so by the way, if you going to propose to a girl, don't take them to climb mountain. Why? Because when you climb mountain, you, your body is so arousal, and you may believe you love her so much. And then you propose. And then after you cool down, you say, why propose? I'm scared. All the girls say, yes, yes, yes. Then later say, why I say yes? I don't really love the guy. But your body is so arousal in that time. You believe you love that person. Okay? So give yourself 10 seconds. Calm down. Calm down. Okay. Is anybody, if you drink Sprite and you shake, 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 shake before you open, you shake, 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 and when you open, what happened? All the air is out, and that's something for our emotion. So you don't want the air out, you want to cool down. Have that spread, cool down for 10 seconds. Then when you open, nothing happens. And then you can, you can rationally think about, do I want to pursue this marriage right now or not? Do I want to quit school or not? You know, somebody, somebody just drop the clock because the moment so angry, and drop the clock. And after drop class, said, why drop the clock? Because your body may be arousal in that time. Okay? So what's this theory called? Two-factor theory. Okay? So this tell you your emotion is actually come from where? Here. And of course, uh Hattie said here. Oh, I say that's thinking, actually it's not, right? This is a little bit different, right? So yeah, so sometimes here and here, not too far, but they can be very far. Yeah, so everything when you are have here, also us here. See, if your heart agree with your mindset. If your heart don't agree, then think about it, okay? Now, I give some example. Uh, for example, if you walk on the campus, and then you say hi there, to a student, a fellow student, and the student just walk away. Okay? Well, you may have a different response here. Depending on what you say. Okay, you say, what a rude thing to do to ignore me like that. You feel so angry. Or you say, I know it, I'm not good, no one will ever like me. You feel what? Sad. Can you see that? The same thing, 
You encounter the same situation, but depend on how you interpret that, right? Or for the exam, okay? If you pass exam and you believe actually you work so hard for that, you will feel so happy, right? Or you work, you you are success, but then you actually you even don't remember your exam and you walk in the class and you happen to exam and you take exam. And you're pretty good. I don't think you feel proud. You feel surprised. Oh, I didn't know it. Oh, I'm good, right? Or feel a little bit guilty. Hopefully, the teacher don't ask me do I, how do I study, right? Or if you feel the exam and you know you didn't study, you feel guilty. But then you, you fail and you know you study, but the teacher, you feel angry, right? Do you see that? Same thing, but because how you interpret the situation make you a different emotion, right? Or like this, Olympic, okay? Which one get the second place? Which one? Oh, this one, right? And then this one is third place. But which one looks happier? Why? Don't you think suppose be this one happier than this one? Why this one's happier? I make it. I make it, right? And this one's like, oh, this close. When you are this close, you feel, oh. And then this one's like, yeah, right? So, depending on what do they have in mind. Right? Okay. And then friends criticize it. So you write a paper for your teacher and then you ask your friend to give you, you know, parading. And your friend give you some criticizing, find some mistake, okay? Then are you appreciate or you are so, you will be angry? Is anybody you take criticizing pretty good? Okay, why? What, what do you have in mind? Huh? It just makes me better. Okay, how, what do you have in mind? Yeah, thanks them. Right? Right? Thanks them. How many of you actually work with very angry? You don't know me. <laughs> right? Right? So actually, it's all here. Right? Okay. That makes sense, right? And of course, emotion is very complicity. You know, that's why sometimes kids have trouble to get through that. No, they, their mind still developing. Remember, PRJ talk about cognitive development, right? Anybody remember those stage? Sensory motor, pre-operation, concrete operation, and then formal operation, right? And then for little kids, they still that in the pre-operation. They don't know what's that. They are confused, okay? Okay, and then actually, emotion also something to do with the culture. Some culture teach people be happy. Some culture teach people be humble. Don't be too exciting. Okay. So actually, uh, you know, see that this. That's you can see that we we can say it's a universal. Everybody happy, right? But then some culture say you should be happy in what way? Okay. Now here. Okay, they say culture determines what we should do. Okay, so here, here say, if we are from collective culture, they actually believe if you are happy, actually you should relate to other people. Okay, so you should be happy because everybody gets success, not because of you. Okay, and then if you are, if you are from the individual culture, then they believe actually you should that's in your heart. If you are angry, angry. If you are happy, happy. You don't need to worry about other people. Okay, but some culture believe, you know, yourself is not important. Think about other people. Okay, you should cheer when everybody happy, not because of you. Okay, um, and some culture actually have a lot of words about emotion. Some culture hardly find the words. So for example, when I knew in this country, 
When I learn English, I learn love. Then I learn love. In other words, called in love. Uh -huh. Love. What's mean love and in love? What's the difference between love and in love? What's the difference between love and in love? When you use in love, when you use love. For example, I can love everybody. But then when you say in love, that's something specific. That's a companion. Huh? In love is a companion when you love people that's like family. family. Yes, that's true. Right. And so that means in this culture, the love, that word is already too universal. So if you don't get another word, people, the specific person, don't really know you really care. In my culture, only love, that word is already too much. We don't even know how to use that word. It's too much. Too much. So then, my husband and I, we seldom say love in Chinese. That's, that's too much. That's too much. Okay. Um, so actually, when we say it, we, we need to use English. That's second language. So don't really goosebump. But we want to say that in Chinese. Oh my gosh, are you okay? <laughs> the word is just too heavy. But this culture, the word is not enough. So you need to add another word to express that emotion, right? So you can see actually culture, different culture that encourage emotion expression is different, right? Okay. And also, different culture also de determine what's called primary, okay? So they say anger is primary emotion by individual culture. So individual culture, they encourage, okay, you can be angry. That's primary, you don't need to learn. But for collective culture, shame and lose face is a central emotion. Right? Okay. So actually, I have this, I will have you, you have to watch at home. Uh, that's YouTube there. For example, in Japanese culture, in the wedding, you see the wedding picture, if they dress that traditional dress, they don't smile in the wedding. But you see that little girl? See the face? She, 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 she doesn't know any rule. So it's called display rule. Display rule is mean the culture teach you what emotion you should display in certain situations. Okay, so for example, in my culture, for the funeral, you have to cry. You have, 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 have to cry. Okay, they even hire the cry people. Okay, so then in your neighbor, they suppose hear cry voice. That you cry. But the funeral here, people come. You are sad, but you don't hear the very loud cry voice. Right? And then in, in Japan, they, so I have a YouTube that some people are waiting. Actually, usually they have a two waiting. One will be dressed like this and will be very calm. But when they change to American waiting dress, everybody will be excited and crazy. Okay? So that is one example there. Another example, okay, actually, is anybody watching this movie, Feather on the Roof? You love, do you like that? I saw it a long time ago. Yeah, so I have some clip that when you have time, you can watch it. And actually one of the, like this they're waiting, and then one of this one, this one, oh, 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 o
and then then after after they able to finally say the word the final song say what the final word say it's good to know see so different culture that express emotion totally different way so if you are interested you can watch that that, that movie okay and also um when we express emotion you also need to make sure your body and your words are the same. If you are inconsistent, people confused. For example, I say, I love you. I love you. People will say, I thought you love me, but your face don't tell me you love me. Right? So it's important. Just give me a second. I think I need a, I need a charger. Is it good? So you need to be consistent in your body language to show people your real emotion. Otherwise, they are very confused. Okay. Now, okay. So you, you see the display work. Okay. Uh, display rule, right? Display rule is you or teach when you display what emotion, okay? Emotion work is you have to show center emotion even you don't feel like it. Anybody, your job is required, you have to smile all the time, right? And that can be very hard. Even your customers are so rude, you still need to say, how can I help you? It's very hard, right? And that's called emotion work. Emotion work it means you show your emotion even you don't feel deeply. Okay, but anyway, remember we say facial feedback. So if you even pretend to be happy to face your customer, maybe eventually you will like you will happy. Okay, regardless how they rude to you, if you keep smile at yourself, hopefully you are happy. Otherwise, it will be very hard, like a fry tendons. You know, when I fly to Taiwan, it's what? 13, 14 hours, and they have to smile all the time. It's a hard emotion work. Okay, and then this talk about how male and female differently when they, in terms of express emotion, okay? Female express emotion more than male, okay? But the research is show male express emotion more to the stranger, especially for anger. Very interesting, right? If, if, if a stranger get into your house, break your, broken your property, the male will jump out, you know, very angry. Okay, now let's talk about stress. I know we only have a few minutes. Now, when, we, when you are under the stress, when you are under the stress, Usually they have these three stages, okay? The first stage is when your body starts to, you, you can see that, you start to see the symptoms, you start to have a heart beating very fast, okay? And then you start to have that resist, okay? So you, was, you start to find yourself, you, 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 for example, you may start stay the whole night to finish your homework, study for your exam and you don't get to feel tired. However, if you keep doing that way, you'll become exhaustion. Your body will start to, you'll start to easy to get cold, it's easy to get sick, okay? So it's important before you get here, you need to find a way to reduce your stress, okay? So now actually here, I'm not going to get through this detail. You are that you, you, you see that. When you have stress, actually our body have a two channel, two pathway to help you to either fight or fly or able to learn to reduce your stress. Okay, so this is one channel. Go to this side. Have a tenemus and go here. And this will be another one. Okay, we call HPA. Okay, now. When you under the stress, okay, then your immune system may have a trouble. Okay, if you're under too much stress, your immune system, your white blood cell 
maybe you know an increase or something to help you overcome the stress but then they'll be in trouble if you're too much okay now again when you under stress also your mind your mind can help you right so how do you help you first of all your locus of control that means do you believe i can control this stress or you are control my stress okay if i believe i can control we call internal control okay i have so many homework i have so many assignments i have so many exams for these two weeks but i know i'm in control then you will you you'll be able to calm down a little bit more if you believe actually it depends on the teacher i will do my best but i don't know what great teacher will give to me if you keep thinking about this you will be more stressed okay so you have to bring yourself into internal locus okay now we know the culture teach us different way okay western culture will say fighting back okay eastern culture will be say okay take it okay so different culture may teach you different way to to reduce your stress okay now okay we know if you are under stress they can be you know lead to your depression so what can we do what can we do okay here actually have what i have here okay first of all, they say it's important if something make you stress because you you know you 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 have something relationship problem confession and forgiveness it's a good way okay i'm writing the counseling technique right now called forgiveness counseling they say it's hard to forgive but once you're able to forgive you give us yourself a freedom you give us yourself freedom we thought if i hate keep hating the people the prayer peace person will be in emotional prison no yourself okay so forgiveness is important okay i almost done i'm just going to show you these three things okay so when you are under stress of course you have to learn to calm down yourself right and then you have to focus on your breathing that's called mindfulness okay when people say follow your heart you need to say follow your breathing this breathing is make you alive when you still breathing that means you still survive right and then it's important to exercise okay now when you are when you have problem do you want to focus on emotion or you want to focus on problem right some people focus on emotion that means i'm so angry so i need to calm i need to calm down and people some people say i'm so problem stress, stressful okay let me solve the problem okay so then actually here emphasize on emotion and this take step to solve the problem and also depend on how do you make comparison a lot of time you give yourself so much stress because what you keep compare with the people this they always do this bad they always do this good how they always do that good well don't compare with them compare people in your level and just think about how many people actually less fortune as you okay so when you are at the end of semester if you are so stressed for the homework ask yourself how many people even no chance to do the homework they want to go to college they don't they're not able to go so they don't even have time or a chance to drive homework so you should enjoy even a lot of work because you are working for that something called degree right and so the comparison and important to tell yourself no matter what happened i'm going to learn from that experience I'm going to learn from experience. Every experience, experience become a story for your life. Do you believe that? Okay. And then also the appraisal. We say your thinking influence your emotion, and your thinking also influence your stress reduction. I believe I finish. Okay. Before you go, since this last day, can I have each of you just say? few words about what do you learn from this class can i do that so i can recall your voice
Is that good? You feel comfortable, right? If you don't raise your hand, then I, I will skip you. Who want to go first? You want to go first? Hey, that's you. What do you learn from this class? And what do you think is important to learn psychology? Is this class helpful? For what? Life. Yeah. For helpful for the life? Mm -hmm. Psychology is the key to life. Okay, that's a good answer. Okay. Yeah. I think it's important because you learn how to understand like why other people behave the way they do and why you behave the way that you do. Okay. Thank you. That's good. How about you, Brendan? Uh well psychology is very important to like she said, understanding how people think or why they they think like that. Okay. Do you feel you learn from this class? Yeah. Do you like me? Yes. In what way? <laughs> As a teacher. As a teacher, right? Of course. I need to say that, right? Otherwise, it matters. What do you say? Okay. I Jimmy? think it's important to be a comprehensible person. Okay. And then how, how, what, what part of this class you think is helpful? What part? Yeah. Like, what do you mean? The lecture or the homework? Oh, um, taking notes in class. Okay, taking notes in the car. Yeah. Well, see, she write a good note here. Yeah, this is a good spot. Yeah. <laughs> How about you? Um, psychology is uh, important just because it helps you understand, you know, how your mind works. Yeah. You, you can, like, manipulate it from there. Yeah? Yeah. And then, did, did you like this class? Yeah, I actually did. Like what? Um, it was pretty cool, you know. It's a good way to start your Monday. Yeah, a good way to start Monday, huh? Yeah, yeah that's a good word. Yeah, thank you. How about you, Shaman? What's the question again? I'm sorry. What was the question that we want to talk about? About psychology. Oh, psychology. Um, I think psychology is good, especially in my, around the mind. Yeah. It definitely breaks down the emotions and where they come from. Yeah. And I think the best part of this class is so much. Okay. How about you, Abdullah? Uh, I learned how two people think from childhood to death. And yeah. I like this class. Yeah. I like you. So. Thank you. Thank you. How about you, medicine? I learned why people think the way they do. Yeah. So you like this class? Yes. You enjoy this class? Yes. Okay. What well, teacher like to ask this question, huh? Okay. So then that's how do we? How do I show here? Let's say class is over. Say together. Here. Ready? Set. Go. And then I want to wish you guys the best. Oh, me 